So welcome ladies and gentlemen. So today I thought I'd do a bit of a video about the end of the season. We'll talk about the teams that are getting promoted, demoted, uh, top scorers, obviously the winners of each league as well. And yeah, I just thought I'd round it kind of off. I know there's still the Champions League final. Yeah, we're going to do a game of the week for that. And then there's a couple of uh, playoff games to play as well. But for the most part, you know, it is done and dusted. Uh, if you're looking for Pez 2019 details and everything else, check out other videos, of course, that I have on my channel and subscribe for some more. But anyway, but let's dive right into it. We'll talk about the Premier League. We know, of course, the champions of England are Manchester City, as much as I hate to say it. Uh, they deserved it. They did. They scored 106 goals this season. That's ridiculous. I mean, they scored the most. They conceded the least. They got 100 points overall. And they were no doubt the best team by an absolute mile. Man United finished in second somehow. I mean, I still... Still, for me, look, disappointed with the United season. Yeah, they finished second, but they didn't pick up a trophy. Um, the FA Cup final was a bit of a shambles. I, I didn't think Chelsea deserved to win it, but I didn't think United did either. I thought it was a very stagnant final. I don't like Mourinho's tactics. I've said it before and I'll say it again. You know, Martial should be playing, doesn't want to play him. Just doesn't seem to get it right, Mourinho. Give him another season? I don't know. Either way, United finished second, Tottenham third, Liverpool fourth. Those four will all have guaranteed Champions League football. Uh, whereas Chelsea, I mean, they can be disappointed with that. Fifth in the table, not getting the Champions League football. Europa League, but they did get the FA Cup. So at least they got a bit of silverware. Arsenal finished in sixth. And Burnley, I think the shock of all shocks. I mean, to finish seventh, to be in Europe next season, massive Massive achievement for them. And well played, rightly so. They deserved it. They did enough. Um, you know, 54 points is a good amount of points to get in the season. And they finished five points ahead of Everton in eighth. Uh, bottom of the table. So down goes West Bromwich Albion. Unlucky. If they brought in the manager that they had now, and thankfully they are keeping him, and rightly so, they may have stayed up, but they left it too late. So they're heading down Stoke as well as Swansea City. And you look at Swansea there, five defeats in a row. If they just picked up a, a win and a draw, that would have been enough to keep them up. But it wasn't. Didn't do enough. So down goes Swansea, Stoke and West Bromwich Albion. So let's have a look at some of those top scorers, shall we? Uh, Mohamed Salah, 32 goals in the season. He had a goal every 91 minutes. That's pretty much a goal a game. Um, 10 assists as well, pretty good. 60% with the shots on target. Harry Kane finished in second with 30 goals and 2 assists. But there's the difference right there. The, the assist alone, you know, Salah getting 8 more than Harry Kane. Uh, Sergio Aguero, 21 goals. But you've got to remember, he played only 1,900 minutes compared to Harry Kane's, you know, 30 uh, or 3,000 minutes and then Mohamed Salah nearly 3,000 as well. So if Sergio Gro was fit, he very much well have could have uh, sort of challenged Salah, but he didn't. So those were the top three there with Jamie Vardy at 20, Sterling had 18, Lukaku at 16, relatively decent, uh, Firmino there on 15. Uh, Lacazette got a little bit better, didn't he, during uh, the second half of the season, so 14 for him. So we have a look at the championship table. Uh, it's Wolverhampton Wanderers. They are heading up. 99 points for the season with, did well. I mean, uh, very, very good season for them. Lost seven games. Cardiff City also heading up uh, with 90 points. I mean, they're in the league not too long ago. So good to see them back up there. Um, and then we've got Fulham and Aston Villa playing each other in the playoffs uh, over the weekend. So will it be Fulham? Will it be Villa? Either way, we're going to get uh, get those bad boys back in the Premier League next season. Bottom of the table, Sunderland. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, went from bad to worse, hasn't it? They've gone from Premier League football down to Championship, and now they're heading down to League One. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Uh, Burton Albion also heading down along with Barnsley. That's a shame. Barnsley, well, a relatively decent side I remember back in the day. But, yeah, down those uh, three teams go. Top scorers. There it is. 21 goals. Vidra with 21. Four assists for Derby. Uh, Lewis Graben there. Sunderland and Aston Villa scoring for both sides with 20 goals in second. Bobby Reid for Bristol City with 19 along with Leon Clark of Sheffield United. Uh, Jota with 17 of Wolves, Waghorn, Ipswich of 16 uh, with Sessignon 
of Fulham. So those are your top goal scorers. So we move into League One now. It's going to be Wigan Athletic back into the championship along with Blackburn Rovers. Remember those days when Blackburn Rovers and Man United had some cracking games, didn't they? The old Alan Shearer days. Was it 95 when they won the league? I can't remember now. But, yeah, they were a very solid team back in the day. So good to see them back in the championship there. Uh, Shrewsbury, Rotherham, Scunthorpe and Charlton all got into the playoffs. But it's going to be Rotherham and Shrewsbury, third and fourth, that are playing each other in the playoffs. So one of those will also be heading up into the championship. Bottom of the table, Burler, uh, so Burler. I was going to say bottom of the table, blur. But bottom of the table, Berry, Milton Keynes, North and Hampton Town, and Oldham Athletic are going to be heading back down into League Two. So a bit of a shame for them. Berry had a real tough season. Didn't even get the double digits for um, winning matches. And yeah, wasn't too good for them. Let's have a look at the uh, top goal scorers there as well. Jack Marriott for Petersburg with 27 goals. Uh, Brett Pittman, 24. We've got Willem Gregg, 19. Bradley Dack, 18. Tom Eaves with 17. Uh, Charlie White with uh, 15 there as well. Finally, having a look at the League 2 table, um, Accrington Stanley will be heading up with Luton Town and Wickham Wanderers. Uh, and it's going to be Coventry and Exeter City facing each other in the playoffs. So one of those two will be heading up into League 1. Bottom of the table, sad to say and sad to see, uh, Barnet. Uh, I actually used to play for Barnet many, many years ago when I was 11, 12, 13. Used to play for their youth team. Um, so it's sad to see Barnet heading down again to sort of the conference divisions. But, you know, if they picked up a couple of wins beforehand, because they had a great finish to the season. I mean, they won, drew, won, won, won. But unfortunately, uh, I think it was Coventry didn't do them a favour. They didn't win their last game, so... Morecambe did, and uh, yeah, Barnet and Chesterfield will be heading down next season. Have a look at the top goal scorers there. It is uh, Billy Key with 25 goals. It's quite quite a decent amount there with uh, Mark McNulty, 25 for Coventry. Aisa had 23 from Cheltenham. Holton with uh, 21. Doidge with 20. Stockley with 20. James Collins with 19. So those are all your English uh, divisions. I'm just going to go through the main now European ones. We're going to start with La Liga with Barcelona winning that one pretty comfortably. I mean, it was very much like the Premier League. It was not a close race at the top at all for the top two. Uh, Barcelona had only one defeat in the whole of the season. 99 goals. They're probably disappointed there. They didn't get the triple digits. But still, very impressive. First, Atletico Madrid second. Real Madrid will be disappointed with that. Finishing third, losing six games. Wasn't the best season for them. But if they win the Champions League against Liverpool, of course, it will make it much better. And Valencia finishing in fourth. For those four, we'll have the Champions League spot with Villarreal and Real Betis um, finishing for uh, the Europa League spot. Bottom of the table, Malaga, Las Palmas and Deportivo La Coruña will be heading down miles off the pace absolute miles away there from 17th the bottom three so yeah you probably say they did deserve to go down top goal scorers leading the way no surprise Lionel Messi 34 goals for the season not too shabby at all uh, he had 88 minutes per goal pretty impressive Cristiano Ronaldo 26 goals scored Played a little bit less minutes than uh, Lionel Messi. Was he injured for a while? I can't remember. But uh, yeah, 18 minutes per goal as well for him. Luis Suarez with 25. Uh, Aspas from Santa Vigo with 22. Uh, Christian Stuani with 21. Uh, Anton Griezmann with 19. Uh, Maxi Gomez with 17. Looking at the Italian City A, ah, Juventus crowned champions yet again. Another dominant display by them. Uh, Napoli in a, in a close second, to be honest. Credit to Napoli. They did really keep pace with Juventus. Only finishing four points behind them. And they scored you know, a hefty amount of goals as well. Romish, uh, Romish? Who's Romish? Uh, Roma finishing in third with 77. And Inter Milan. Yes, Inter Milan back in the Champions League as they pipped Lazio at the death to uh, finish in fourth. And Lazio, AC Milan and Atlanta will be getting the Europa League spots. Bottom of the table, Crotone 
Hellas Verona and Benevento will all be heading down next season to uh, the second division. So, unlucky for those. The top goal scorers, let's have a look. Immobile, 29 goals. I mean, I don't get Immobile. He can score 29 goals for Lazio, but he can't score at a brothel for Italy. I mean, absolutely horrendous for Italy. There's nothing, but he can bang him in the league. Come on, Immobile, turn it around. Uh, Icardi with also 29, so... Impressive stats there for him. Dybala, 22 goals with five assists. Cagliarella with 19 for Sampdora. Uh, Mertens of Napoli with 18. Higuain of Juventus with 16, along with Dzeko with 16 as well. Looking at the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich confident. Uh, I can't speak today. Bayern Munich in uh, top pole position, 84 points. Play 34, 127, drew three, lost four. 92 goals for them. Schalke in second, way off the pace though. But then again, Hoffenheim also way off Schalke. And uh, it was pretty tight there between third and sixth. But it's going to be those top four that get the Champions League football with Leverkusen and Leipzig picking up Europa League. Bottom of the table, Köln and Hamburg both heading down. Uh, Wolfsburg did survive. It's very strange how they do it in the Bundesliga because the 16th place side faces the third place team in the second league of the Bundesliga and uh, Wolfsburg beat them by a goal to nil. So it does mean Wolfsburg will survive another season in the Bundesliga. But they're certainly going to have to pick up the tempo. Uh, top goal scorers, not even close, to be honest. Robert Lewandowski, 29 goals, 75 minutes per game, nearly double uh, of Nils Peterson of Freiburg with 15, Mark Uth with Hoffenheim with 14, Fulkrug with 14, Valand with 14 as well. So, yeah, wasn't really too close there with the top goal scorers and the golden boot. Having a look at the Portuguese league, it's FC Porto, 88 points, winning it with Benfica in second. I mean, those two did respectably well. Only two defeats for Porto, three for Benfica. Those two will be guaranteed Champions League football, and then the Europa League will be Sporting Lisbon uh, and Sporting Braga. Well, look at that gap there between fourth and fifth. What is that, 24 points? That's an awful lot. Bottom of the table, it's going to be Astoro, Praia and uh, Pacos de Ferreira. Said those wrong, but those two are heading down, unfortunately, for next season. Top goal scorers there is Jonas. 34 goals for him. That's a lot of goals. 73 minutes per goal. And Benfica, Bastos with 27 goals. Uh, Morega with 22 Fabricio with 15, Abu Akar with 15 as well, along with Rafinha with 15, and Paulinho with 30. So looking at the Dutch league, uh, PSV Eindhoven, the champions, uh, confident win, confident display by them. Only three defeats in the season, Ajax in second with 79. Those two will be guaranteed the Champions League spot the next season. Uh, Alkmaar and Feyenoord Europa League with 71-66 points, third and fourth. And I believe 5th through 8th, what are they, play for a playoff for the uh, final Europa League spot? I'm not sure. If I'm being honest, I'm not, you know, whole into the whole Dutch league too much. But there seems to be some sort of playoffs going there. Let me know if, you, if I'm wrong, to be honest. Uh, FC20 are actually the champions. Can you believe that? 2010, FC20 won uh, the Dutch league. They finished second the year after in 2011. And here we are in 2018, and they're getting relegated how times change. Only 24 points for them. Uh, and Kirkrad and Rotterdam looks like they're going to be facing each other to determine who's going to stay up and who is going to go down. Top goal scorers in the league. We'll take a look here. Jakan Bash with... Uh, I mean, that's a mental name. Don't know how you say it. Jakan Bashish. <laughs> Jakan Bash. I'm just calling him uh, Jahan. 21 goals for him from Alkmaar. Uh, Johnson with 19. Uh, Burgess with 18 there, Verhorst with 18 as well, Lozano with 17, Linton with 17. So, good display by this young lad, old lad, whatever kind of a lad he may be. Finally, let's have a look at the Russian League. Lokomotiv Moscow are the champions, 60 points. Not a whole lot of points, to be honest. I mean, they lost six games this season, and they drew six. It wasn't the most compelling display by any of these teams. But they win it. Moscow in second. Those two will have the Champions League. Uh, Spartak Moscow and uh, 
was that? Krasnodar will have Europa League. That must be pretty impressive to, to pip ahead of St. Petersburg. Great season for those. Bottom of the table, Tosna and uh, Kabarovsk. Looks like they'll be heading down. Look at that. All those defeats. Wow. And a playoff will be happening between these two sides at the end of the season to see who stays up and who goes down. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it. That is everything in a nutshell. That is the end of the season review. We are going to be back. I'm going to be doing Game of the Week, of course, for the Champions League final. Liverpool, Real Madrid. I do want to do a World Cup playthrough for you guys whether it be on fifa or not you know i just think it's it happens once every four years it should be fun enticing intriguing and um yeah if i have to pick up fifa to do so i will have to do it I just have to try and find a cheap copy somewhere because i don't have it other than uh, on the nintendo switch but anyway we'll be back very shortly i hope you guys enjoyed it i may you know the master league i don't know like i say i really just want to do the world cup at this point you know fifa or sorry pairs 2019 is out now end of august so yeah i will get back to the master league probably but we'll just see when that's the question but until next time hope you guys enjoyed it uh, let me know your thoughts on the season overall. Who do you think was the best team? The top goal scorer? The best player? Is it Ronaldo this year? Salah? Messi? You let me know. But until next time, take care.